Once there lived a lion who always roared with anger when he couldn't find any food to satisfy his hunger. Every day the ferocious lion went on a killing spree, hunting down animal prey at least two or three. The animals were worried and so they gathered together. They made a plan to meet the lion without delaying further. The lion was overjoyed when he saw them coming near and said to himself, Hmm, whom do I eat first, the hare or the deer? Good day to you, dear king. We'd like your opinion about something we've been thinking. Okay, okay. What is your petition? I am here to listen to your problem and give you a solution. The jackal bravely said, If you continue with so much killing, there won't be a single animal left here to call you king. The lion replied, Then what am I supposed to do? Am I a fool to go without food? The jackal spoke, Don't worry about your daily meal. We shall surrender one by one. Isn't that a good deal? Well, not a bad idea at all. The lion said with delight, then I don't have to go around hunting. Am I right? The jackal nodded. Yes, right here. You will get your food. The lion agreed. Your suggestion is indeed very good. Every day, one animal was sent as prey to the lion. For the king, getting the meal without a strain was fine. The lion soon became healthy and strong as steel. Then one day, it was the hare's turn to become his meal. The hare hatched a plan to stop this wicked act. Hare decided to go very late, using his clever tact. The lion became very impatient and shouted out in anger. The hare timidly snuck towards the roaring lion. The lion shouted out with anger. It's already half past nine. I need an explanation for this, do you hear? Don't you know that I would be waiting here? Another lion attacked me! The hare cooked up a story. When I told him about you, his face became red with fury. Your Majesty, he has challenged you to a fight. He wants to rule the forest after proving his might. The lion shouted. Take me to that arrogant lion at once. I will teach him a lesson for testing my patience. The hare led the lion to an old broken well. Seeing his reflection inside, the lion began to yell. Looking at his image, he mistakes it for another lion and says, Wait till I attack you. I'll get you, you swine. The lion was gone for good. 
And the animals in the forest lived in a happy mood. It was in the lovely suburb of Scottsdale. Woken up by the sun, the city was starting to get busy. A little girl by the name Choo Choo lived in the suburban house. Little Choo Choo had woken up and gotten ready to go to school. Walking down the stairway, her nose was lured towards the kitchen by a mouth-watering smell. Her mommy was busy making breakfast to be put into her lunchbox. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, sweetheart. Mmm, smells good. What is it? It's my grandma's secret recipe. Spicy chickpea sandwich. Is it for breakfast? Mm-mm. It's for your lunch. Mmm! Yummy! Thank you, Mommy! Choo-choo! Your school bus would be here any minute. We need to start moving. I'm ready. Let's go. On the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Her stomach started to grumble. She was waiting for the lunch bell to go. Would you like to share the spicy chickpea sandwich that my mommy has made today? I love that. Okay, here we go. Choo Choo opens it to find the sandwich missing. Her eyes were filled with tears. Looks like someone has eaten the sandwich and left your lunchbox empty. Don't cry. We'll figure this out later. Come on, share my lunch with me. They both shared Chico's lunch and the apple Choo Choo had brought went back to class. like you are sleepy. Come on, Choo Choo. It's sleepy time. Next day...
cry. Share my lunch with me. Looks like someone is being mean to you. Let's put an end to this act. How do we do that, Chiku? We can both handle hot, spicy food. Ask your mom to make the sandwich spicier. I'm sure no one else can handle it. They might not want to eat a spicy sandwich. Sounds good. Good morning, Mommy! Good morning, sweetheart! Mommy, can you make me two sandwiches? And could you make it spicier? Sure, sweetheart! Be careful! It might be too spicy! Bye-bye, Mommy! Love you! Bye-bye! Love you too! and Chiku rushed to find Harry run towards the boy's toilet. They both went to the locker and found the half-eaten sandwich. They smiled at each other. From that day onwards, Choo Choo's lunch was intact for her to share it with Chiku. It was a lovely green forest, which was home to a lot of animals. A cute baby elephant by the name of Jingo lived in the forest. The baby elephant felt lonely and wanted to make more friends. One day, the baby elephant said to itself, I'm bored of being alone. I would go around the forest, explore, and make new friends. That would make me good and happy. The baby elephant finishes its breakfast. It starts on an expedition to find new friends. Hey there! I'm Jingo! I am an elephant! Hello! I'm Plucky! I am a monkey! Nice to meet you, Plucky! Could you be my friend? Kidding me? No way! You are way too big! We can't play swinging from tree to tree! Hmm, okay. I still see you as my friend. The sad baby elephant walked on, not giving up hope. The baby elephant walks through an area which had big bamboo trees. Hey there! I'm Jingo! I am an elephant! Hello! I'm Spotty! I am a panda! Nice to meet you, Spotty! Could we be friends? What? No way! You are way too big! You will gobble up all my bamboo trees! So you don't want to be friends with me? I will still see you as my friend! 
Having walked a long way, the baby elephant felt thirsty. It found a pond and started to drink water from the pond. It heard gurgling sounds and saw a head pop out of the water. Hey there! I'm Jingo. I am an elephant. Hello. I'm Abby. I am a hippopotamus. Nice to meet you, Abby. Could we be friends? No way. That's never gonna happen. You are way too big. You can't play with me under the water. Maybe not. I can play with you on land. Nah, that's not gonna happen. You will still be my friend. It's getting dark. Let me get back home and come back tomorrow. Next day, the baby elephant, after finishing his breakfast, heads on its expedition. It sees the animals running helter-skelter. It stops one of the animals. Hey there! I'm Jingo! I am an elephant! Hello! I am Chubby! I am a brown bear! Nice to meet you, Chubby! Gotta run! Hey! Hang on! Why are you running? The mean tiger bandit is trying to eat us. We are running to hide from his wrath. Gotta run. Go hide and be safe. Guess I should talk to Bandit. I should make him stop from hunting other animals. Hey there! I'm Jingo. I am an elephant. I am the Great Bandit. I am a tiger. Oh, okay. So you are the one killing my friends. Yes. What are you going to do about it? You got to deal with me first before you hurt one more of my friends. You dare challenge Bandit? Yes. Stop. Or else. Or else what? My dear friends, the tiger is gone for good. You can all come out and won't have to hide anymore. Sorry we were all rude. We have realized our mistake. We will all be friends with you. They all danced in joy and played around. And they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>
You are just saying it to scare me, sire. The naughty mouse ran towards the Lion King. The chief mouse <gasps> was stunned by the action of the naughty mouse. The naughty mouse pulled the mane of the Lion King and made it into a soft bed and laid down on it. The naughty mouse's act annoyed the Lion King, who was playing with his cub. The Lion King showed his anger by roaring and tossed the naughty mouse away with his nail. The naughty mouse rolled, bumped into his friends and all of them fell down. The Lion King marched towards the naughty mouse and roared. The naughty mouse was shivering with fear. Looking at this, the chief mouse ran and stood in front of the Lion King and said, Forgive the youngling, O oh mighty king. Chief mouse yelled at the naughty mouse and asked him to leave and turned towards the Lion King and said, Oh, mighty king, forgive the youngling for his mistake. The youngling has angered me and needs to be punished. I will eat him. Oh, mighty king, I offer myself in his place. <laughs> I will eat you both. The chief mouse halts and draws his sword and says, In that case, I have no option than to fight you to protect my subjects. The Lion King was taken aback by the chief mouse's reply. The Lion King takes his paws towards the chief mouse. The chief mouse shivered with fear but still got ready to defend himself. The Lion King said, I am so happy to see your courage and care for your subjects. Your intent to want to end this row has impressed me to let you both go. The Chief Mouse was so happy to hear this and said, I thank the Mighty King and I hail. We'll repay this kindness without fail. A few days went by. The Lion King and the Lioness were out walking in the savannah. A hunter had laid a trap cage to catch the Lion King. The Lion King, without knowing, falls in the trap. Our king! Our king! He's trapped in a trap cage laid by a hunter! We need to go and make way for his escape! <sighs> the chief mouse was going for his evening walk and notices the Lion King in the trap cage. <whistles> Hearing his whistle, an army of mice came running, thinking their chief was in danger. The chief mouse points his fingers towards the trap cage and said, Let's all work towards releasing the mighty king! Let's do it! Charge! All the mice started chewing on the trap cage and the cage gave way. The lioness jumped with joy. Oh, mighty chief, 
I thank you and your subjects for saving my life. Oh, mighty king, please do not mention. I am so happy that I could repay the kindness you showed sparing our lives. Next morning, the Lion King and the Lioness were sitting and basking. Both of them noticed the chief mouse going for his walk. The Lion King and the Lioness gave the chief mouse a smile and saluted him. The chief mouse returned the smile and the salute. From that day on, they were the thickest of friends and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Cusley. He had grown to be a naughty kid. He pushed his friends down, bullied them, and wanted his way around in everything. His friends were soft and forgiving in nature. They just put up with his harsh and rough behavior, thinking he would change. He had the bad habit of tearing his books, throwing his clothes, and breaking his toys. It was not going to be long before someone taught him a lesson. It was a nice sunny day. His mom yelled out, Cusley, your room looks like a garbage bin. Your clothes, toys, and books are all over the floor. I need the floor cleaned up with all your things put in place. I will be paying a visit to your room pretty soon. You don't want to be grounded, do you? Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. I'll make sure the floor is cleaned up. Wow, that was fast. This does not look like your room. Good job. Hmm? <laughs> Come on, let's go for a stroll and grab an ice cream. It's a treat for your hard work. Mommy, I feel tired and sleepy. Dinner is ready. Have an early dinner and hit the sack. Yeah, okay. Whoa! I so forgot that I had dumped these things on the bed. Now, get out of my bed and get back to where you belong. Cusley threw his books to the floor. He tossed his toys around and dumped his clothes under his bed. Now that my bed is cozy, let me put off the light and go to sleep. The next moment, Cusley was deep in sleep and was snoring away to glory. He started to mumble. He started to toss and turn in his sleep. The toy monster truck zooms past, trying to crush his toes. The books flew around crashing and bumping into him. The clothes piled up together and was trying to cover him. The toy robot was pulling his hair, jumping up and down on his tummy. Finally, the giant storybook that was hanging on the rack above him crashed onto his head with a bang. There was a loud thud. Cusley had rolled off the bed and was on the floor. He woke up shrieking, startled, dazed, and sweaty. Whoa! What was that? 
Looks like I had a dreadful dream. It was more of a nightmare. Let me get up and put my things in order. Let me put them where they belong. From that day onwards, he realized his folly and decided to be gentle to one and all. He promised that he will take good care of his books and toys. It was a quiet little suburban town called Parkland. The town was admired by its neighbors for a big park it had. The mayor and the locals thought that the park would be more lively if it had animals. They decided to get a cute baby elephant to be the park mascot. They went to the nearby zoo and adopted a baby elephant and brought it back to the park. The baby elephant was so naughty, yet sweet and adorable. The locals and their kids brought fruits from their home and fed the baby elephant. The baby elephant was so happy and played with the kids who visited him. One day, three little boys who were naughty came to see the elephant. They saw the locals feeding the elephant with fruits. One of the boys had a banana in his hand. The boy wanted to play a prank on the elephant. The boy said to himself, let me place a stone inside the banana and feed it to the elephant and see what he does. The boy picked up a stone and placed it inside the banana with an evil grin. The boy gave the banana to the baby elephant but started eating it happily. The boy said to his friends, I have placed a stone inside the banana and have fed it to the elephant. All three of them looked at the baby elephant and sniggered. The baby elephant, while eating the banana, bit the stone. The baby elephant was in so much pain. The boy and his friends were giggling and sniggering. They were boasting among themselves of their evil deed. The baby elephant took note of this. Since it was getting dark, the boys left to their homes. The next day was the naughty boy's birthday. His mother had gotten him a new shirt. The boy wore the new shirt to play with his friends. The baby elephant notices the boys and decided to reciprocate the evil deed. The baby elephant thought to itself, Hmm, I should teach the boy a lesson. This will make him not to play this prank again on anyone else. The baby elephant noticed a muddy puddle near the play zone. The baby elephant silently went to the place where the boys were playing. In a whisker, it splashed the puddle of muddy water on the boy with its trunk. The boy was drenched by the muddy puddle water. The boy started to cry, saying, My new shirt! My new shirt! It's all dirty! And so am I! <laughs> the baby elephant felt bad <gasps> looking at the boy cry. Oh, I feel bad looking at the boy cry. Let me make the boy feel better. It thought and said to itself, Let me clean the boy up with clean water from the nearby stream. The baby elephant 
ran to the nearby stream and filled its trunk with clean water. The baby elephant went to the boy and sprayed the clean water from its trunk. The mud on the boy was all washed away, yet the boy was drenched. The baby elephant went to the boy and with its trunk blew a lot of air and dried him up. The boy recollected his misdeed and said, I am sorry for being mean, baby elephant. The elephant smiled and extended its trunk and shook the boy's hands. The boy smiled at the baby elephant and told him, Please wait. The boy runs and fetches a banana and gives it to the baby elephant. Elephant hugged the boy with his trunk. The baby elephant took the banana from his hands and ate it. From that day onwards, they were the thickest of friends and lived happily ever after. This was in a quiet suburb in the city of Scottsdale. The suburb had a nice school and a lovely park. A little girl named Choo Choo and her younger brother Cha Cha lived in the lovely suburb. Next door lived a little girl Chiku with her brother Chica. They all went to the same school and were very close friends. After school, they loved playing in the neighborhood park. One day, while playing, they had noticed a man sleeping under a tree. This man seems to be sleeping whenever we see him. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. Should we find out whether he's sick and needs help? No. Let's not go near strangers and talk to them. But we should help. Once we go home, let's tell Mom and try to help him. You are right. Let's do that. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chica started to play. <laughs> I need to get rid of these kids. They are disturbing my sleep. Need to make sure they never come back. Looking around, the man noticed a few paint cans. Mommy, there is a man in the park who is always sleeping. We fear that he is sick. We wanted to tell you and get him help. Good job! I shall look into it. Choo Choo's mom called the mayor's office and reported. The mayor's office assured to have a look into it. The mayor visited the park and he put a community notice. Homeless man. The mayor left the park and the man started to paint the monster. The weekend had started. The kids head towards the park, wanting to play. Choo Choo's mom, with a book in her hand, sat on the park bench. Mommy! Mommy! All of a sudden, Choo Choo's mom heard the kids scream. Whoa! What's wrong? Why did you all scream? Why are you trembling? The kids pointed their fingers towards the painting. She saw the monster's painting and held the kids. She distracted them by giving them some toys and a little candy. She called the mayor's office and reported this incident. Folks! Till we figure this out, let's not send the kids to the park alone. 
Play safe! And yell out if you get scared. I'm right here. Just play where I can see you. We play right here and we'll be safe. As they were playing, they see the man shivering. Cha-Cha, looks like the man is really sick. Look at him shivering. You were right. Let's go tell your mom. The kids run and tell Choo Choo's mom what they had seen. Good job, little ones. Let me call for an ambulance to take him to the hospital. And the man got better. Who brought me to the hospital? He was told about the kids who found him sick. The man felt bad of his misdeed. Discharged from the hospital, the man went to the park. He saw the kids playing from a distance. I was being mean to these little kids. It's time to make it right. Let me remove the scary monster picture I had painted. From that day onward, he sat and enjoyed watching the kids play. He watched over them and kept an eye on them ever after. Deep in a dense jungle, there lived a family of parrots in their nest. The mother parrot had laid her eggs in the nest. The parrots said to each other, The rainy season is around the corner and the little ones are about to be born. Let's go collect and store food for feeding the little ones. The parrots flew in search of food. A snake that lived in a mud burrow under the tree heard the parrot speak. The snake said to himself, Let me feast on the eggs while they are gone. The snake climbed the tree and crept into the nest. It looked at the eggs with an evil grin and started feasting on them. The parrots, after collecting food, returned back to their nest. <laughs> they found the broken eggshell and they started to cry. A monkey hunting for fruits came by that side. Looking at the parrots cry, the monkey said, Sad to see you both in tears. Tell me the story. I am all ears. The sad parrots replied to the monkey. While we were gone in search of food, my eggs were eaten by this snake with a hood. The monkey, hearing the parrot's story, felt sad and it asked the snake, Why did you eat the eggs that were in the nest? The snake with a mean mind hissed and snapped at the monkey and said, How dare you! Question me once more and I will bite you! The monkey sits all sad with the parrots. Monkey gets an idea. Monkey calls a crow. Call! Call! Monkey then narrates what had happened and tells the crow. The princess removes her jewel while she takes a shower. Can you fly into the courtyard, pick the jewel and drop it into the snake's burrow? Crow agrees to the idea and said, Caw, caw, 
I'd be more than happy to do that to get rid of the mean snake. Caw! The crow then flies to the castle and sees the princess taking a shower. It sees the royal jewel on the table. The crow then swoops down, grasps the jewel and flies towards the snake's burrow. The maid of the princess notices it and he yells out to the guards. Crow thief! Crow thief! Stole the jewel! Catch! Catch! The guards hear the maid shriek and start to run behind the crow. They notice the crow drop the jewel into the snake's burrow and perch on the tree. The jewel landed on the neck of the sleeping snake. Wow! That's a lovely jewel! The guards with their spear dug the snake's burrow and the snake came out. The guards asked the snake to hand over the jewel and the snake said, This is mine! Finders keepers and losers are weepers! Na 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 na! The guards got so angry and killed the snake with their spear and took the jewel away. The parrot, monkey and the crow let off a big sigh. The parrots thanked the monkey and the crow for their help and lived with their younglings happily ever after. It was a nice sunny Sunday morning. Choo Choo had gotten up and finished her morning chores. She wished her mom good morning and sat in the chair at the porch. She was looking sad and preoccupied. Her friends who came down to visit her wondered why she was looking sad. Choo Choo, what's bothering you? Why are you sad? I want a pet animal. I want an elephant, a giraffe, a lion, a monkey as a pet. Wow! Sounds pretty exciting. It would be fun playing with them. Choo Choo's mom walks by. Mommy, I want an elephant a giraffe, a lion, a monkey as a pet. Hmm? <laughs> Dream on. There is no way you are going to get a nod. Are you kidding me? Forget it. Choo Choo decides to wait and ask her dad once he's done with mowing the lawn. Daddy, I have something to ask you. What is it, dear? I want an elephant, a giraffe, a lion, a monkey as a pet. Can I, please? Whoa! But all these are wild animals. Hmm. Here's the deal. Let's visit a special place first. Then, you can decide on what animals to have at home as a pet. Choo Choo's dad takes her to the zoo and walks along with her.
Daddy. Daddy, I changed my mind. Wild animals belong in wild environments. I understood that they cannot be kept at home as pets. Forget it. Let's go back home. Glad my little girl realized it. Come on, let's go home. Daddy, could you stop the car, please? There's a small puppy on the road. Looks like it might get run over. Aww, looks so cute. Daddy, looks like this puppy is abandoned. Can I adopt this cute little puppy? Can we take it back home with us? Sure, Angel. Firstly, we need to take it to a vet and get it vaccinated. Then, we take it home, give it a nice bath. Mom would have a spare towel and a small bed for it. The puppy could sleep with me in my room. Oh yeah! Let's give the puppy a warm welcome into the family. From that day onwards, the puppy was part of their family. Choo Choo and all her friends played with the puppy and were happy ever after. <laughs>